my mouth and my teeth, spinach in my teeth. No, I got a little bit of pizza in there, but that's okay. Pizza, no. No, no, no pizza. I, I some pizza. meat sauce hanging on here me, too. Me, me, Milanese. Milanese, Milanese at uh, Marco's Italia. Marco's Italia. Okay, so Harry, what's new in the zoo with you? The new is, since you asked me, yeah. is a poem that I would like to read in honor of my wife, which you put up a great uh, presentation. It's a poem called The Bedroom. The Bedroom. That's a good, good thing to do. That's I love a good your topic. bedroom. Yeah. The sheets are always clean and cold. The windows are on the east side and the south side. There's always a nice cool breeze. There's a quilt on the bed at the foot of the bed. Next to the bed, even with the pillows, bowl, water, roses, the tops of. What was fresh finding the water in the bowl by the bed? Her father took her mother a fresh flower every day of her life. She is two years older and she is beautiful and strong and delicate. Sensual as the sun keeping the night from being black and its pillow, the moon water. Very nice, very Thank nice. you. Even though I didn't understand and, and that's, any of it. Oh, that's Harry Northup's greatest hits. Yes. This is from uh, Pudding yeah. House Press in Ohio. Pudding House. Yeah, Pudding right. House Press. Yeah, so... Uh, you understand that's that. Beautiful that's beautiful. nice when you can have the greatest hits album. It's such a, such a nice tribute to, to your wife. Well, we all have nice wives, beautiful wives, and we're thankful for it. It's a miracle when you have love between two people, right? Is there a billboard rating on poems, you know? Yeah, no, they don't have any. There's no billboard well, top poem this last, week? Probably the last greatest hit of all time was Allen Ginsberg's Howl and Other Poems. That was probably because there was a big uh, court trial in, what, 55, 57? Yeah. And then it went through the roof. Billy Collins, he's, he was a poet laureate a couple years ago. His, he, made, uh, uh, he sold over a million copies, but that's rare. Yeah, how, do, how does somebody become a smash hit poet? Well, like days. Ginsburg, a, a court trial, that's yeah. number one. Yeah. Well, we should sue you, Harry. No, yeah. these days, <laughs> Throw I think there's no more taboos anymore, right? It's a word of mouth, though. That, 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 that's the amazing thing about even your field, the painting field, is, is a word of mouth. Of course, they, 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 there's marketing and everything, but great painters just seem to emerge out of the ether. Yeah, sometimes. Movies are, are made by, by word of Erwin Kokori and the Red Fox. Yeah. Both of them were in an era where there were nothing. They had no way to draw people in to see them unless one person had seen them and went home and told them their, their, their friends were a great comedian. There was no radio for them. There was no television for them. There was, there was no exposure. And then Red Fox and them started to put out underground records. Really? Yeah. Oh. He was the first one to have underground records, and he became a hit, a national hit with no, with nobody knowing him really, other than the people the people that got wind of Now at 95 years old, he's living in New York. He's living in a mansion that the, that the city is disputing with him as to whether it's a landmark or not, and. He spends his days raising money from Mexican, poor Mexican girls to send down to Mexico to help them by panhandling at the entrance of Queens Midtown Tunnel. Yeah. He goes, to, goes there every day. Could you imagine that? And some, a lot of people recognize him. And first, I can't believe it. Is that who they're yelling back to the cars back there? That's Erwin Corey over there. Well, that's the ultimate stand-up act, right? Every day you're doing your stand-up. When he's helping people, I thought he was going to Haiti. He no. said he would make oh, between like 150, 350. He, uh, he's still, he's still at, at, at 95, and he's still working at 95, but he got a lot of political problems. Does he tell them a joke while they're giving him some bread? He's, 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 he's talking about, about a life thing. Well, you know, Jonathan Demme, uh, he lives up in Nyack, and sometimes he will wear a sandwich board, and he also will raise money for the poor people in Haiti. Yeah. He would wear a sandwich board for them? He would wear a sandwich he board. He Haiti. He raises his girls in Mexico. That was a lot of money in Nyack. Yes. How about you? Did you ever do that? What? Panhandle for no. money? I couldn't panhandle. 
but but I'll tell you, standing out in front of after the show, when I work on cruise ships, some of those little lines required to stand out with your DVDs as they come out of the theater. I felt like a panhandler. Yeah. I felt horrible. Boy, I I sympathize. Anybody has to sit there and wait for people to come to you. To come yeah. To you. yeah, that's it. They just walk by, or they just stop from there, and they do. That's a hard experience. But you were talking earlier about painting. There is a big market for painting. I mean, you go to people's homes, they have paintings. We live in L.A., which is very visual. There are a lot of a lot of money to be made in, art, in the art world. David's made a tremendous amount of money. You made a lot of money. You're a very successful commercial Over artist. Over the years. That's hard to do. It's yeah. very hard to do. There are some yeah. people that oh, get great, great criticism. Uh, you know, just to make a living as an artist is a blessing, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's pretty rare. Because a lot of professors we were talking are... about that. Where were you? Chicago? No, we were talking about... Early on, you were talking about... We talked about poetry, then painting and, and film. But there's a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of artists are professors, right? You know, they teach. Yeah, art. instructors. You know, yeah, it's not that easy to make a. Yeah. And you've made a living as a commercial artist, which is pretty, pretty great, right? Making a living, I don't know how you do that. Make a living out of anything you like. I don't know how you good. arrive at a price. How do you arrive at Whatever a price? Whatever the market will bear. Yeah, that's it. You keep putting it up until they but won't someone, buy it anymore. Someone has to come up with the first idea. Well, listen, can we? Uh, Don. Without laughing, can can, can we say? 50,000 with this, will they, will they throw us out of the room, you know? There's a certain... Well, yeah, there's there's a break-even line. And how much people feel that they... And then when you get up in the millions, how do you evaluate that? Is why I asked a director one time at a film festival how he gets money from the producer. You know what he said? I just keep asking him for mon more money until they squeal. <laughs> yeah, until they squeal, yeah. Well, they will. <laughs> <laughs> right here, it's pretty fast. They'll squeal. Yeah. You made up a living as a comedian. That's pretty rare too, right? How old were you when you made started making living I, I, as a comedian? I, I, I was in good good shape uh, by the time I was thirty, but I was uh, I was really I got into it early. I I, I played the copper. I was a, I was a comic for eight months, and that really was a, a hindrance rather than a help because I got jobs because of the nature of the inventiveness of my material. Yeah. But I didn't have the experience like those guys, like any young men and uh, Milton Berle and Alan King, to deliver with the professionalism. Yeah. Was this a wardrobe break? <laughs> I, excuse me. I, 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 yeah, I, makeup. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like makeup. A, it's like a guy doing yeah. this. He's talking to you, right? While you're talking, he goes like this. Yeah, you know the white handkerchief. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, but, go ahead. But do you know what you, you know what I noticed about that? <laughs> what I just noticed in that, in that one one minute of insanity, Liga. It's like civilized insanity. Yeah. Is, is what I I attribute to, 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 to my friend Harry. Is that he took a baseball hat, <laughs> a baseball hat, and was putting it in like a, like a Stetson. Like a Stetson. He knows exactly what part of it, where those guys take their hats and they throw it on it, on the back. He handles that baseball hat like it was the most exquisite of all garments. This is another way you're talking about, but Rambo, the poet, he said you have to arrange yourself in order to derange yourself. Okay. Right. Rambo's a poet? Like, Rambo? Rambo? Was you that? know the symbolist poets, you know? Rambo. Rambo, Baudelaire, oh, oh, Berlin, Bellarmine. Yeah, yeah, those are the drunks. You know them. Yeah, no, not the Harry. Or... Once you have a wine, they're named after you. They should name a wine after all of these guys. I love the Myron Baudelaire. Cohen Baudelaire. Chardonnay. How about yeah. that? Do you like the Myron Cohen Chardonnay? No, is that a joke? No, I'm asking you. Oh, Myron Cohen. You're the comedian, not What a me. nice man. Did David ever meet the Myron Cohen? I met him at the Friars Club in 1984. Really? Yes. Was he was he nice? Is he nice a guy? Very yeah. pleasant soul. Uh, he was real happy. I recognized him. Yeah. It, well, you know, it, uh, he's he, he even when he works, he used to he works in a business suit. You know? Oh yeah, he looked very businesslike. He's and, so elegant, even if he's he's doing the most a, a low class character in society. He still does it with such bearing and grace. And yeah. concision. Yeah, 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 yeah when he you used to great. go on tonight show or something, it's concise, right? Yeah. He gave, he gave me a joke once, and, uh, well, actually, we knocked it back. We were talking about cruises, 
back and forth, and we arrived. At, uh, he, he, he shaped it up for me. But I think he's the greatest joke I ever wore. He says, you tell, tell this song on a cruise ship. And tell it first before you go with your act. Tell, to, to tell him that this, this reminds you of once you're on a cruise ship. And, and a beautiful blonde girl, gorgeous blonde girl, incredibly beautiful woman, is what falls overboard into the raging ocean. Everybody's out on deck and sees this girl, legs flaying. Dress flies off her, and she's in the water, and sure death. And she, the captain yells to somebody, and, and they get the grappling hooks and the light preservers, and they throw them out. It's dark, they don't know where she is. And all of a sudden, a little Jewish man comes bursting through the crowd, leaps overboard, does a perfect dive into the water, goes in there. With, by some strange act of fate, they drag them both up on the deck and they save their lives. And they're laying on the deck, exhausted, and the captain comes over to the guy and says, says, that's fantastic, sir, I've sailed all these things. Is there anything I can do for you, any question I can answer you? He says, yes, I only want to know one thing, one thing I want to know from you personally. Who pushed me? Who pushed me? <laughs> yes, indeed. You heard that joke before. Uh, you must. Know. Yeah, but in a different uh, format. Yeah. It's very similar, you know. Who pushed him? Who the, pushed the who him? pushed me in the pool? Did you get it? Who pushed him? Did you get it? <laughs> you have to talk to poets. Because they're, they're, they're looking That was for, funny. They're looking You're for funny. It. Yeah, you, 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 you only know what's funny when you hear laughter. <laughs> laughter. You well, know what about comedians? They don't laugh. Sometimes they just say, oh, that was funny. I never laugh. I can't. I, well, I lost yeah. that wonderful. Privilege to laugh at somebody else's jokes, or to really enjoy. I enjoy them. I appreciate. It. I say, oh, that's funny. The guy's brilliant. But before I put the comment, I used to be on the floor. Yeah. Oh, I used to be laughing. I wonder what feeling you get in your belly. You just let it run. Your tears come down. That don't happen to me. You know, Except you during faulty towers. Oh yeah, that's faulty insane. Faulty towers. He can put me on the floor with his exasperation. Yeah. With his frustration. Oh, yeah. He gets so upset over everything. My God. If you never did this, you go do an acting job. You come home and you have a beer or something and you're washing dishes after you've cooked for yourself and you start laughing. You said, you mean I got away with that? They let me get away with that. And you start laughing at something you did. You don't ever have any of those things when you think about what you did and you make people laugh. You don't ever chuckle at something you did. Probably I do. I do. I, I know I have a, another person living in me that when I work goes outside and checks everything out. Said, that was a good line. Now you better rush up with your funnel late and oh, uh, you fuck that part of your head up. Yeah. There's a guy out there that gives me a constant blow by blow review. You're making have, the noise. Do you have a do you have an no, I'm, I'm you totally complaining. I don't I'm not separated from myself. When you write your poem, you don't hear voices. I exist between the schizophrenia. I'm examining the difference between insanity and madness. What is the difference? I'm examining it. I haven't found out yet. I'm examining the difference. That's between how to go crazy. Huh? That's how to go crazy. The minute you think you find out what it is. Bam! You're nuts. Yeah. You're nuts. Yeah. You know you're not nuts if you consider, right? You think you're right all the time. Then there's something wrong. Right? You have doubt sometimes, don't you? I sometimes yeah, I doubt it all. Well, here, here's, the, here's the funny people for me. I don't know about you. Lenny Bruce, Mort Saul, Bill Maher, George Carlin, Don Sherman. Those Jackie are the funny Mason. people. Don't those forget. are the people who make me laugh. Do they make you laugh, those people? Some of them. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jackie Mason. Some no, Jackie Mason. No. Jackie Mason. He's endless. He's actually other. funny as she has No life. Oh, yeah, no, no life. A funny act and a funny comedy of the world. But you can't relate to a woman, you can't no. relate to a friend. It's just humor. It's you have any children? No, I think yeah, he has a child. He does, it's yeah. It's so funny. He the, had a, a, the mini Jackie. And looks just like him, and he denied his birth. He's yeah. a Rebbe, right? Yeah. He denied his birth. Jeez. Well, what's our word of the day, guys? Milanese. Milanese, How that was lunch. That? I don't know. I taste it. Uh, M-I-L-A-N-E-S-E. -E. He does. You, you, you. Milan. 
He said he don't know how to spell. He know he's tasted it. But like, so that's the place. Well, that, that's all you want to do. That's is the taste place it. that became famous in Milan. Milan, in the okay. Milanese. The Milanese. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Okay, guys, we'll see you again. Okay. See I you, so. David. Sayonara. Yeah, so nice you take time out from your master. Busy schedule. Okay. Ciao. Ciao.